What is Rhinebeck? Hi everybody, my name is Christy Glass and if you're watching this video, you are either a longtime subscriber of the Christy Glass Knits YouTube channel or you googled or searched on YouTube, what is Rhinebeck? And I am here to answer your questions. And I consider myself somewhat of an authority on Rhinebeck for a few reasons. One is I actually resided in Rhinebeck for about five or six years. I had a beautiful home on about six acres, just about seven minutes from the fairgrounds in Rhinebeck. They're called the Dutchess County Fairgrounds. And I also have been attending the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, AKA Rhinebeck, since about 2011. So that puts me about 10 or 12, 13 years paying attention to or attending the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, AKA Rhinebeck. So when people say the word Rhinebeck, they could be talking about a few different things. First and foremost, it's the New York Sheep and Wool Festival and the website is sheepandwool.com. There's nothing about Rhinebeck on it, except that the Dutchess County Fairgrounds are located in the town of Rhinebeck. Some people will use the term Rhinebeck weekend because they make a whole weekend out of it. The New York Sheep and Wool Festival, which is known as Rhinebeck, started in 1980. So it's actually younger than me. And it started with local shepherds who were selling their bread ewes. So you can imagine all of the different sheep farmers, shepherdesses, shepherds coming together to sell more sheep. It was a market for actual sheep. From there, in the past 43 years, it has expanded and changed and grown, and it has become what it is today. So what is it today? Today, it is a two-day festival. It's usually the third Saturday and Sunday of October at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds in Rhinebeck, New York. It's usually 9 to 4 or 9 to 5 on Saturday and Sunday. And when you get to the fairgrounds, you park in the giant parking lot right outside the fairgrounds and you can enter, I think, one of two places to get into the fairgrounds and you walk around. There are different buildings. There are some that are completely covered, like sort of proper buildings. Some of the buildings are like old horse or animal stalls where people set up little booths and they're a little bit more cramped and crowded. And there is a very clear map and every vendor has a location so you can look ahead of time if you want to strategize on who you get to see or you can just walk around and discover what you discover there are also buildings for actual animals so you will see sheep you will see camelids you will see rabbits they have all kinds of contests happening where people are showing their sheep they have sheep sales they have fleece sales they have yarn vendors anything you can think of is there. They also have food vendors. So they'll have the apple cider donuts that you can purchase, or they'll just have regular old carnival food. It is truly a festival and there's something for everyone. Don't forget the pan flutes. <laughs> there's always the pan flutes playing. There are bathrooms. It's just a lovely event and there's enough outside and inside that you can just mingle about and have fun. I've been told over the years that Saturday is much more crowded than Sunday. So sometimes people use Saturday as more of a socializing day and then Sunday they purchase the yarn that they wanna purchase. Now, the founders of the Sheep and Wool Festival, if they have been around since 1980, which I think some of them have, they're really into keeping it local in the surrounding areas. You will see Thin Sheep, Catskill Merino, Morehouse Farm. Those are all very local to the festival. You'll see farms from Vermont, like Wing and a Prayer. You'll see Green Mountain Spinnery, et cetera, et cetera. It's so exciting, especially if you want to knit to breed specific. Solitude Wool is a great place for that. You can see all these different breeds there and you just learn so much about where our fiber comes from, from attending this festival because this is their mission for sheep and wool this new trend of the past 10 15 years of having indie dyed wool superwash merino wool oftentimes or other bases these indie dyers have not been welcomed into the festival a few have i've seen miss babs there i've seen primrose yarn co once you're in you're in pretty much for life unless you do something that offends i guess whoever's in charge i have seen that happen too unfortunately. But once you're in, you're in. So there are some indie dyers at New York Sheep and Wool that you can access. But there are so many now, so many, 
that about 10 years ago in 2013, Lisa Chamoff of India Untangled started the India Untangled Festival. So that would be considered a fringe event. So when you go to Rhinebeck for Rhinebeck weekend, you can also attend India Untangled, for example. So her first India Untangled was so popular. It was crazy crowded. It was insane. I think I was at the first or second one. It was wall to wall people. So she has since changed venues. She's changed how she tickets people. As a result, people have timed entry so they can go in, do their shopping for a few hours, and then they have to leave for the next group of shoppers to come in. It's the only way to make shopping a pleasant experience and she's figured it out. And I know she's had to push through some pushback on that because people just want to get there. They want to line up and they want to go in, but it really does make sense because of the way these small towns are set up in upstate New York. Only the Dutchess County Fairgrounds has huge parking lots and huge empty space. Everything else, you have to kind of navigate this small town lifestyle. So Indian Tangled was one of the first fringe events that happened as a result of New York Sheep and Wool's location. I think her event is on Friday, Thursday and Friday maybe. Another person who has created a fringe event is Jill Draper. So Jill Draper lives right across the river from Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck is about two hours north of New York City, and there's a town right across the river called Kingston. They're kind of sister cities. If you live in Rhinebeck, you go to Kingston to go to Target and get some groceries and, and just do some things over there because Rhinebeck has really specific rules about what businesses can be there. So people who live in Rhinebeck are very familiar with Kingston. And if you ever go to the New York Sheep and Wolf Festival and participate in these fringe events, it's really good to keep in mind that Kingston is a great option for you to stay because it's really close to Rhinebeck if you can't get accommodations there. But also keep in mind there is just one bridge between the two. So it can get very crowded and a lot of traffic on these particular days. You can sit. So Jill Draper is someone who makes gorgeous wool and she dies in her studio right there in Kingston and she has not been let into the festival, which seems really, really crazy. It seems crazy that Andy Dyers that don't live anywhere near Rhinebeck are in, but Jill Draper who lives right next to Rhinebeck is not in. So she has started this event where she has an open studio and you can come and visit her and purchase her yarn. And I think she has appetizers. I've actually never been able to go before, but people say it's a lovely event. And she's someone who really thought outside the box about how she could solve this problem. These fringe events are all about making money. Everything's about making money. So even the New York Sheep and Wool Festival started with shepherds who wanted to sell their ewes. So if you're in the yarn business, Rhinebeck weekend is the time to sell yarn. There are I've heard there are upwards of 30,000 people who go to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. I don't know if that's true, but think of it, 20 to 40,000 people descend upon this little tiny town in New York and you are in the yarn business, you wanna be there. So a few other events that have popped up as fringe events, I'm calling it fringe, meaning they're taking advantage of this group of consumers coming to the town for New York Sheep and Wool Festival. There's a few other examples. So Needles Up was there for a few years. I don't know if they're doing it every year, but Legacy Fiber Arts, they organized this sweet little shopping event called Needles Up. And they just had like five or six vendors, none of whom really competed with each other. I went a few times and they had like soap and wool wash, they had bags, they had roving, they had yarn. So, and also like stitch markers. So it was a great little group that you could go. Nobody was competing with each other. They're all selling something a little bit different. And they also, I believe, did timed entry to get into this event. Perfect Blend Yarn Shop is a yarn shop in Saugerties. And so I know Mary who owns that shop, she's always inviting all the knitters in to come and see and shop. And I'm sure she has special merchandise just for Rhinebeck weekend. I believe the Knitting Garage is now closed, but Knitting Garage was always welcoming people into their yarn shop because that is the local yarn shop there in Rhinebeck. I actually worked with the owner to put on a few events, maybe four or five years ago now. We did this event, a shopping event called the Yarn Bazaar at the local church there, which was a free event. and line down the block people were coming in and shopping and it was it was so much fun and that same weekend i had a knit night in that church as well so that was an example of a fringe event that occurred because people were in town and wanting to get together and do things 
In the past couple of years, a few new shopping events have popped up. One is Cake Palooza, which is by Cake Yarn Co. Alyssa. She has her own building in Sogarty, so it's perfect for her because she can just set up tents and have her her yarn guests there on a Friday. I do believe she also sells tickets to timed uh, entry for that. And I was able to help her bring that to the people virtually during the first year back, which was a lot of fun. And then there's another event called Wool and Folk, which started, I believe three years ago as well. So that was started by Felicia of Stringthing Studio and Catherine of Brooklyn General, both Brooklyn based yarn shops. And they worked together to bring Wool and Folk to the Hudson Yards, which is this beautiful location in Kingston. And I attended that the first year. So they had lots of people there actually who vended there and at New York Sheep and Wolf. India Untangled is an example of someone who she will only have a vendor exclusively sell at her event. If you are also selling at New York Sheep and Wool, you cannot sell with her. But I think Wool and Folk, they welcomed vendors in who were selling at both. So some people were selling not only at New York Sheep and Wool, but also at Wool and Folk. They also had some food and some music, and I believe they did some interviews at their event. So it seems like in the past couple of years, the co-founders, Felicia and Catherine, are not working together anymore. And Catherine has a new event called A Woolen Affair, which I think debuted this year, 2023. It was a small event. She had some special guests there. I think Amy of La Biana May was there and maybe a couple other sponsors. And then Felicia continued with Wool and Folk as the third year. And that event was moved from Hudson Yards up to the Catskills, about 20, maybe 30 miles north of New York Sheep and Wool. So Wool and Folk, A Wool and Affair, Cake Palooza, Indian Tangled, Needles Up if it still exists. Any of these events that are not called New York Sheep and Wool are not Rhinebeck, in my opinion. But as the years have gone by and things have evolved, I do think that everyone puts all of these events, all of these fringe events, including the New York Sheep and Wool Festival together in the description of Rhinebeck. So I hope that answers your question of what Rhinebeck means. It's multi-layered, and a little bit complicated because so many different people are throwing their hat in the ring to participate to earn the yarn money that they that they work so hard for all year long. Now here's something interesting. This is a book called The Rhinebeck Sweater. And this was actually published in 2013. This is 10 years old. So about 30 years into the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, this book came to be. And I want to read you a little paragraph on the back because I do think it helps to sum up what we're using as the, the words to describe this beautiful event. Making a special new sweater to wear to Rhinebeck has become a tradition for many knitters. Pattern selections are poured over, eye-catching colors are chosen from favorite dyers, techniques are selected to highlight skills. Knitters work furiously before the festival, finishing in the car, blocking on hotel beds, anything to ensure the fabulous new garment can make its debut in the perfect environment among a community who will truly appreciate it. It doesn't matter anymore whether a Rhinebeck sweater is actually worn to Rhinebeck. The important thing is to wear it somewhere with pride. Make something that you love and that demonstrates your love for knitting and for yarn. Find the perfect patterns for yours in the Rhinebeck sweater. So that's what this book is called. And on the back, it says 12 projects by Isolda and friends inspired by the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival. So it's actually not called Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival. That is not the official name. It is called the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And like I said, the website is sheepandwool.com. Good for you guys for getting it first because there are sheep and wool festivals all over. But I feel like this book came about from knitters getting excited to go to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival every year and knitting especially for it. So I'm wearing one of my favorite Rhinebeck sweaters. This was my Rhinebeck sweater mm, in the teens, maybe 17 or 18. And I decided to wear it today just to give you an example of something that you could possibly see at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. 
because of these fringe events that do start Thursday and Sunday, some people knit for every single day of the festival. And I've seen knitting groups come together. So for example, the Knitters League, the past couple of years, they all choose the same yarn, but they use different patterns. Or I have seen all of the knitters in a group knit the exact same sweater, but with different colors or maybe everyone will knit from the same designer. That is why I so love doing Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater because you see it all at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival and it's so beautiful and so inspiring and I really hope to get back and do it again for 2024. I've had a few family events come up for me the last two Sheep and Wool Festivals and since I don't live as close as I used to, it is harder for me to get there. If you're sifting through photos and you're seeing certain terminology, there's a couple of things to take note of. So one thing that people say a lot is the hill. And I've only happened upon the hill a couple of times. I think it's called Podcaster's Hill. And I think about 10 years ago, Ravelry used to gather there and they would hand out these little pins and you would put your name on it, like you're a Raveler or your, your Ravelry number. Did you know that every Raveler has a number? And so that's, I think, how that started. They just had meetups. And so depending on who you follow on social media, you'll see that your favorite makers are having different meetups. So Podcasters Hill is what it's come to be known as. They meet at like, I don't know, 12 or one o'clock, sometimes before or after the Ravelry meetup. And if you have different people that you wish to meet, usually they will advertise where they will be. Typically, I have met over at the Apple Cider Donut Hut around two o'clock on Saturday. In past years, that's where I've had my meetups so that if anybody really wants to be in Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater, they can meet me there and we can talk about sweaters or we can take a photo or whatever. So depending on what interests you and who you follow, usually leading up to the event, they will put on their feed where they're gonna be at what time. I hope this clears up any questions you have about what is Rhinebeck? And I just wanna put in a plug for Rhinebeck the New York Sheep and Wool Festival is just one weekend of the year, but they have a lot of beautiful community events, wonderful restaurants, and it's a great place to visit outside of the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, and I hope you get to someday. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I will be happy to answer them down below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.